now going to take us, we've been on the journey of the overview, we've been on a journey uh, a little bit then of uh, uh, looking at the terminology. We've then had a chance with, for Haley to, to scare us around the interactions between 9 and 17. And now we're going to step into the dark world of an actuarial view of the standard, which as an accountant is always somewhere that I'm scared to go. But nonetheless, we will go there. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Jeff. This will be a real treat, I promise you. I promise you. <laughs> so this, this session is, is an actuarial view. It's, it's an actuarial and accountant's view of IFRS 17. So I'm Francis Beans, and I work at Finity Consulting. Um, I'm an actuary. And I've, I have with me uh, Vicky Titmus and Louise Miller, both from Suncorp, who have kindly agreed to share their experiences of the IFRS 17 journey from both an actuarial and an accounting perspective. Before we get, that'll be the highlight, that's the treat. Um, before we get to that, there is a bit of actuarial stuff at the start. So what I wanted to do was just start with a brief overview of what the Actuaries Institute has been doing with respect to IFRS 17 and the information note that the Institute has produced um, and, and why everybody should go and get a copy and, and put it in the, uh, the packs you have today behind the standard and then read it. So we'll start with a brief overview of the task force. So just like um, there are accounting organisations, there is also an actuarial organisation and, and because actuaries are very creative, we call it the Actuaries Institute. The Actuaries Institute has a task force and once again we're very creative, we called it the AASB 17 task force. And that task force is it was set up in about 2017. It might have been at the end of 2016, so prior to the release of the standard, but in anticipation of that, we set up this task force. Um, I'm on the task force, and Vicky is also on the task force, and there's another 20 or 30 actuaries um, who are on the task force. The purpose is to help prepare Australian actuaries for the implementation of AASB 17. And why? Given this is an accounting standard, why are actuaries involved? A lot of the key building blocks that the standard requires, things like discounted cash flows and risks adjustments and things like that, are things that actuaries currently do and will, will continue to do going forward. So those building blocks of cash flows that will be used and, and discounting those cash flows and things like that, those are likely to remain as, as actuarial inputs into the whole IFRS 17 process. So the actuaries are, are quite interested in this standard and how our role is going to evolve with this standard. Uh, I've, I've got pictures of the chairs of the task force. I don't, I don't think that really matters, but we've been, we've been lucky to have Ian Lachlan chair the task force up until this month, and then from now on, uh, Brett Pickett is taking over the chairing of the task force. And what does our task force try to do? So firstly, identify issues and implications, particularly from an actuarial perspective. What's changing, what makes sense, what doesn't make sense. Develop guidance for actuaries. So as actuaries come to implement the standard, um, there's some guidance as to what our role is and what we should actually be doing. And, and that ties in also with educating actuaries. Liaise with accounting bodies, APRA and other organisations. Um, we're currently assisting APRA with working uh, through some working parties in looking at identifying the key issues for APRA's prudential framework that IFRS 17 will affect. APRA will obviously go through a, a consultation process, um, but we're sort of helping identify what could the issues be before APRA then thinks, take, takes them in-house, in thinks about what they want to put in the consultation package and then consults on those issues. And then to the extent that we are able to influence the transition from the current accounting standards to IFRA 17 and also the interpretation, um, if there are particular actuarial issues where the Actuaries Institute thinks you know, there's a range of possibilities, we'll, we'll highlight that range, and then if there's one that really makes sense compared to others, we'll highlight why that one makes sense compared to the others. The, the key piece of output from the task force so far has been the Actuaries Institute information note. And this is a 200 odd page document. It's, it's on the Actuaries Institute website, it's freely available for everybody. And it's a, a question and answer style document that goes through key topics. And the, on the slide, there's the key topics, or some of the key topics that it goes through. 
and, and has questions, typical questions that an actuary might ask, you know, how do I set the discount rate using the top-down approach or the, or the bottom-up approach? And then some discussion, drawing on what the standard says, but also drawing on what transition resource group discussions have said and what the exposure draft has updated. So there's a lot of information where if you have a question about a particular topic, the standard will have some words around it, but then there will be other discussions that have been going on um, around the globe about that particular topic, and so the information note collates all of that into one place so that you can find what the standard says, but then also some, some guidance from the TIG around that, um, but mainly focusing on the actuarial issues. All right, that was my plug. So, as I mentioned, I have Louise and Vicky, both from Suncorp, who are, are joining me for a, a Q and A on actuaries and accountants. Louise is the executive manager of finance for IFRS 17, finance and actuarial enablement at Suncorp. Louise is a CA, so she's the accounting part of our discussion, um, and she's leading a diverse team responsible for delivering IFRS 17 for Suncorp's GI business. Louise has over 15 years of experience at Suncorp providing accounting advice, financial control, and financial regulatory and performance reporting. Vicky Tidmus is the executive manager for actuarial for IFRS 17 at Suncorp. Vicky has a background in actuarial consulting across the UK and Australia and has recently stepped into the role of the actuarial lead for Suncorp's IFRS 17 program. And Vicky is also on the Actuaries Institute IFRS 17 task force. So we have some questions that we prepared before and then we can open it up at the end to any slider questions that people have either for, for me or for Louise or for, for Vicky. So I might just ask these generally, and then Louise or Vicky, you can jump in, uh, whoever, whoever makes sense. So first thing I wanted to find out about was, could you give us an overview of how the assessment and implementation tasks within implementing IFRS 17 are being split between your actuarial and accounting teams? Yep, uh, I'll start with this one. Um, we, as you mentioned, obviously earlier, Francis, <coughs> As you would expect, obviously, some of the topics within the standard seem to naturally fall to, to actuaries or obviously to accountants. Um, so we, we you talk, you mentioned a couple of examples there that, that actuaries will be interested in. Um, I think what we've actually found and we've been going through it is um, even though there's sort of a, a predominant uh, practice area that seems to be interested or can drive forward some of the, the, the activity around a particular topic area, Nothing completely has fitted neatly into one team or, or one functional area um, through the whole journey of the interpretation of the standard, then into the process design uh, and into that implementation piece. Um, so I'll give you a bit of an example of, of what we found on, on one particular area that we, that we thought was quite actuarial, um, but turned out not to be, be quite so actuarial. Um, so as a, a predominantly general insurer, um, Suncorp are looking to obviously try and value um, as much of their liabilities as possible under the premium allocation approach. Um, and as you would probably know, um, that the, the basis for the eligibility of that for long-term contracts is, is really um, bedded in um, differences in liabilities under the two standards. So um, as you might expect, that that's, tends to be actuaries bread and butter assessing liabilities. So um, we got a SWAT team of actuaries onto it. Um, we looked at our long-term contracts. We spent a bit of time modeling the differences between the contracts. So we thought, great, we've got our differences. Now we just need to, to decide if they're material and, and make our conclusions on, on eligibility. Um, but what we found at that point was, well, what is material under IFRS 17? Um, we, the, the sort of tried and tested approaches don't necessarily apply here. Um, and what we ended up having to do was spend uh, almost as much time again, actually, um, working together as actuaries and, ac and accountants um, and reinsurance specialists, as it happened, um, to really understand, you know, what is, it, what is our financial statements, what are they going to look like under IFRS 17, um, what are the particular line items that might make up an appropriate base for materiality, um, what are the dynamics of those items under IFRS 17? Obviously, we're not there yet, but we're sort of trying to look forward and, and work out what that looks like. Um, uh, and, and in doing so, then we could craft a bit of a materiality framework to allow us to conclude on um, which of those contracts were actually eligible for the premium allocation approach. So um, it certainly wasn't our expectation going into that topic area that we would um, end up being sort of almost 50-50 
between accounting and, and actuaries. Um, and that, that's a, been a theme so far as we've been going through um, our implementation program. Um, really finding that we have to, um, it, it, can't, it can't all sit within one team. Um, so we're really working closely together. And I think too, there's um, a number of topics in the standard that are all, um, they're, they're sort of connected, they're, they're related. So a decision you make or um, one of our approaches is to do our initial analysis and come up with a working assumption. So what do we think is our likely interpretation of a particular matter? And then we need to look at what might be some unintended consequences of that. And those type of topics have also meant that we're working closely together. One of our disciplines starting an analysis, so expenses, it tends to be a bit more for the, the finance pe people. What, what's directly attributable expenses? Well, you know, expenses are going into our, our valuation of liabilities, onerous testing, et cetera. So we're finding that they're not necessarily clunky handoffs, but each team needs to do um, a piece of work, get to a point, and then, um, if you like, ha hand that on or work, work together to keep progressing our, our thinking on those particular topics. So you mentioned two things in there. So firstly, nothing fits neatly, and also you, you come up with an initial set of working assumptions. When you're, well, so related to both, do you find that the actuarial and accounting mindsets generally agree on how things within IFRS 17 should be interpreted, or are you finding a divergence of opinion across the professions? Um, well, I don't know if there's necessarily, oh, well, we will always come to agreement, I'm sure, and be friends. <laughs> um, not, not necessarily disagreement, but with a lot of that, um, you know, topics needing input from both parties. Um, we've, we've found that early on as we're looking at different topics, we've had to work together. We've all had to do our own research, come in with our own um, points of view and be prepared to, to debate those uh, and, and share those, if you like, um, to then ideally come up with that common way forward. What's our working assumption? What do we need to... Um, investigate further. So I think we've been learning a lot off each other, mm -hmm. um, coming in from that, that different perspective. And if I say, I've even had to read the task force note a few times, <laughs> the actuary's note, uh, to try and understand things from, from different perspectives. Um, I think to get a much more informed view. Uh, and I think to, it, as we, or as I learn from, from Vicky and others in the project, it's helping us then have different ways to explain some of these concepts to our business stakeholders mm -hmm. as we're uh, looking at the impacts as we go forward. I mean, I, I echo all of Louise's comments there. Um, I'd say actually um, what I've, I've found from a personal standpoint is that it, it's really been a, a pleasure and actually quite humbling to, um, to work outside of your normal um, you know, comfort zone of your familiar discipline uh, colleagues, you know, actuaries or, or accountants. We tend to work quite siloed, typically in a business. Um, and it, yeah, as I said, it's just been a real pleasure to have to to, to draw back. We we come up together with our own opinions. We come together um, and we have to to um, really work through all of that and come to a collective decision-making landing. So um, yeah, that's been a, a really exciting process. And have you been learning particular skills from each other through the journey? Absolutely. <laughs> um, I think for any subject matter expert working um, on an Infra 17 implementation uh, program, um, I don't think you can escape that. I don't think there's any shortcut to learning um, the skills that your colleagues possess. Um, I think obviously we, we talked about accountants learning about, about actuarial skill sets and, and practices and, and vice versa for myself. Um, but we've obviously also got reinsurance specialists. Um, we've got even, even our program support teams are all learning a lot from each other. Um, so we're certainly finding that day, day in, day out, um, there, there's lots to share between the, the function areas. Um, I mean, I mentioned materiality as, as an example before. So I've, I'd say I've learned more about materiality than um, I expected to <laughs> coming into the program. And, and that, that's something, as I said, it continues um, every day. Um, and we're really getting that crash course uh, on a regular basis. Did you want to add anything, Louise, or? Um, I was just going to say, I found to uh, utilising your soft skills or continuing to develop your, your soft skills, communication, 
um, listening, being open. Um, I found one of the actuaries we had on the pro project had a really good um, curious mindset and a really positive way of asking questions and keep probing until we all came to that common understanding. So really seeing um, that come out in your communication skills, uh, listening to each other. And so said, being prepared to put forward your point, debate that, um, but acknowledge that maybe somebody else has a better, better view or um, approach to take going forward. Um, and I suppose, like my last point, then that's also helping as we explain these positions out to our business customers. Had you previously worked together on finance processes? And is, is, IFRS, is IFRS 17 changing that relationship of how you work together? No, well, Vicky and I had never worked together <laughs> before, even though we've probably both been at Suncorp for a while. Um, I think the nature of this project is quite different to some of the other projects we've had at Suncorp. So probably all have system implementation projects, different things where we will have had actuaries, we will have had accountants on the project. Um, and I'm going to use an analogy, and I'm not a musician, so I'm sorry if I've got this all wrong. Um, but, but some of our existing um, projects I'd liken to, we've, we've each been individual musicians. We've had a conductor that's brought us all together. That conductor's been responsible for the um, successful outcome of the project and making sure everything's considered. Whereas in this project, we're, we're working together. The musicians are working together. We're creating the music. Um, yes, we have a project manager, we have a conductor, but, but really we've got to work collectively to make sure that we get this across the line. So I think it's, yeah, it's quite, quite different and a different dynamic we're finding even within our organisation between your, pro, if you call it your project managers, your, your analysts, as well as your um, technical specialists. And once IFRS 17 goes live, how do you see that relationship and the roles between actuaries and accountants working in future? We have a bit of a dream. I don't know exactly <laughs> how that will work out. Um, but, but certainly we would hope as we redesign processes um, that, that we have a lot more integration and understanding between the accounting and the actuarial teams and we, we have one end-to-end -end process that team members do at least have a high level understanding of, of that total process and bring some greater transparency end to end um, to do that. So that's what we're hoping to do. Um, it, it may in our organisation result in changes to roles and accountabilities uh, and where teams sit. I suppose that's yet to be determined. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess I'd just add to that. I think. Um, for me, it, this is one of the, my favourite questions that I get asked about the program. So wh what do you think your role as an actuary is going to be in the future? And, and how do you think um, accounting roles are going to change as well? Um, and for me, one of, the, one of the draws of joining this program was that I, I'm really passionate about breaking down those barriers, um, sharing that knowledge. Um, and I, as Louise mentioned, obviously looking to build that shared process that we can all uh, benefit from. Um, I think one of the other things um, that I'm finding or coming to realise going through the program is um, if, if we can look to implement any shared, shared tools, shared systems, um, really break down those barriers between the silos, the typical silos of actuaries and accountants, um, we're going to really get a lot of benefit from doing that ac across the business and um, certainly that cultural change aspect of working together, you know, this, not, this is not my, my part of the work and this is your part of the work, um, that, that really is a key goal for us on our program and um, I mean, to the extent that we can achieve that, that would be, that would be fantastic for us. Yep. Um, yeah. Well, Louise and Vicky, thank you very much for your time today and going through those questions. I think if, uh, if as a profession we can emulate how, how you guys are working together, i for s 17 will be a breeze. <laughs> We've now got a couple of minutes for any slider questions. That's so positive. That's so positive. Um, we do have a few. Uh, we do have a few slido questions, so we might sort of bring them up. I mean, the first one we've covered a bit of it uh, back and forth anyway in terms of the, the presentation, but useful to revisit. Is there any key takeaways from the the easy parts in the transition to seventeen uh, that you wanted to you wanted to highlight? If there is anything that's easy, or it's only challenges. <laughs> The, the easy parts of working together or the, the technically easy parts? Look, do, do the soft skills part. I mean, look, sometimes it is hard accountants and actuaries sort of working together. Was it <laughs> so, fairly, fairly easy or any, any, any key challenges you wanted to highlight? 
I think what, what makes it easier is certainly having um, dedicated program resources and, and sharing a space, co-location. Um, I mean, Louise obviously mentioned having to have that um, curious nature, that trusting and, and open nature. Um, but I, I think as far as you, as possible, making your program a, a shared space and um, with people that are, are really living and breathing if we're 17, that really helps to progress that sharing of information and, and push us forward. The, the next question goes to uh, how do you explain to people in the business why the results might be changing? So if it's hard for accountants, if it's hard for actuaries, <laughs> the question here is how do you explain to the CEO that, uh, that things are changing? Can you, can you just blame each other? <laughs> Um, I actually haven't sat down with our CEO yet, um, although I think we do um, offer for copies of standards. Um, oh, but that, that is interesting. I just suppose, do a page turn, just yeah. page by page. <laughs> um, you know, I think there's starting to be a trickle of questions from investors around IFRS 17, so in the not too distant future, I'm assuming we will need to uh, upskill our CEO and investor relations, CFO. Uh, people to, to answer some of those questions. Probably start with, it was mentioned earlier today, well, the economics of our business isn't different. Yes, it's going to be presented in a different way. Um, that profit might emerge a little bit differently, but the fundamentals of the business aren't any different. Um, probably not exactly answering the question, but I think a bigger challenge, uh, as I see it, will be potentially in some organisations in ours, um, People are internally used to seeing information a bit a different way, so we're actually looking to, to challenge some of that. What information do you need? Do you really need it? At what level? Um, and I suppose we're thinking, trying to draw a balance between what are some of the existing metrics and the ways of viewing results, which are actually really handy for the business. That, that does help them understand it and make decisions. But um, also we will have a new way of displaying results and that goes out um, probably for many in the room to external investors. So we need our internal people to be able to explain those as re results as well. So part of our project will be working with them on what's um, the best new way, if you like, internally to, for them to understand those results but align or closely align uh, to the views that we present externally and I think uh, at the moment, it's just breaking it down in certain topics and getting their views and understanding where that's relevant. I suppose at this stage we haven't, other than high-level overviews, done a lot about this is what it really means in totality. So perhaps that might be something, breaking down certain topics with um, particular areas of your business that deal with those matters, helping start their thinking. I'm sure as time goes by and it's closer and closer, there'll be some some nice slides, some nice one pages that everyone in this room can share and reappropriate uh, to, to unpack it. So, look, that's been quite helpful. Um, I've also been informed that we'll have the opportunity to, to explore that more in the, uh, in the next presentation as well. So, uh, that will be very helpful. Anyone else have any other final thoughts? Farazi, are you going to make me run all the way over there with this <laughs> one? You, 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 yeah, can you just project? I'm a bit lazy. Yeah, sorry. Uh, it's, it's definitely part of our, our project and our project plan. As I said, what that will look like, uh, we don't know. I, as um, an accountant and mainly playing in the external space, I, I see the importance of having management view results internally that are in the same or largely the same format uh, that you send externally. You've got your messages aligned uh, then. Um, but I, I feel there will be a need for uh, more granular information um, or, or some different metrics that we still will need to be able to to accommodate that. But I, I don't know if I live in a dream, but maybe, you know, we, we can start with these higher level aggregated disclosures that we see externally and then be able to cast, like sort of break those down further to help uh, different uh, business owners understand their results. Perfect. Thanks, guys. Appreciate Thank it. You. Round of applause. We'll... Thank you.